a card, any card. Uh, there we go. Are you happy with that one? Okay, good. Um, I'm just having a bit of a clear out. younger I went to a fancy dress party dressed as Harry Potter. Uh, I didn't wear a costume. I went dressed as a child who wasn't supported financially or emotionally. <laughs> uh, if you're trying to picture that listening at home, at a gig recently someone said to me, you look like Mark Zuckerberg if Facebook had failed. <laughs> Unless you're listening to this in a year's time, in which case I just look like Mark Zuckerberg now. <laughs> One MySpace fan over there. <laughs> uh, in my life, I've dated people of numerous different genders, which uh, does cause people to a bit of confusion every now and then. Like someone once said to me, Tom, I wouldn't have thought that about you because you don't act gay. And it's like, well, you know, uh, I've kissed boys. Like, that's quite gay. <laughs> Like, some people would argue that's the most gay, in fact. <laughs> uh, but it's difficult, because, like, there's also the uh, stereotype that you've had lots of partners if you're that sexuality, which I've not. Like, I don't think it matters if you've slept with 500 people or zero. I don't see why it should matter, because, uh... Okay. Because... <laughs> no one would sort of ever sort of go, uh, Oh, Nelson Mandela, he was great. But he could have put it about a bit more. And by the same token, no one would ever sort of go, oh, John Terry, he's great. Uh, just no one would say that. <laughs> uh, I do like football, though. I like it because it means I can talk to laddish men, because I can't talk to them about anything else, because I don't like cars and I'm not a sexist. <laughs> uh, I think it's a shame there's no sort of a... Uh, yeah, there's a big problem of homophobia in football. There's no gay professional footballers in England, which I think is a bit rubbish, because I think it'd be great if there was a gay footballer. Like, a straight footballer would be like, pass me the ball. And then a straight footballer would be like, pass me the ball. And then a gay footballer would be like, pass me the ball. Uh, sorry, I don't care for lazy stereotypes. <laughs> Football's like a working class sport. I actually am um, working class myself, uh, which again is something people are surprised by. Someone once said to me, uh, Tom, I wouldn't have thought you were working class because you seem quite educated. But it's like working class people can be like intelligent and funny and interesting. Like, have you not seen Top Cat? <laughs> um, if you've not seen Top Cat, basically, uh, think of your favourite cat. He's above that one. <laughs> and then there's this bloke called Officer Dibble who spends his entire life trying to arrest cats. <laughs> uh, but it's hard when you're poor. People say things like, money doesn't buy happiness, but it does, it buys antidepressants. I don't really like how we as a society treat poor people. Like, I don't like how we treat homeless people when people sort of they say things like, oh, don't give them money, they'll just spend it on drugs. Oh, they should go out and get a job. Because what, what they mean by that is homeless people should go out, they should get a job, they should rent their own house, and then they can buy their own drugs. <laughs> like, it's not them saying homeless people can't have drugs. It's them saying, I've had to work hard for my drugs. <laughs> Homeless people should do the same. <laughs> That's right, I'm, I'm, I'm appealing to that very niche market of homeless Radio 4 listeners. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yes, I guess the general sort of uh, theme of my set is not really... It's, um, it's sort of about not really fitting in, like, you know, um, I'm supposedly not gay enough to have dated men. Uh, I'm supposedly so... I'm, I'm too intelligent to be working class. Um, I'm supposed to finish my set with a joke.